Did we wash these? They wash. You already washed them? Yes. Look at you. you. Set everything up and prep it, making it look professional. Hey, this matches my shirt. Mm hmm Look. We're going to wait. No, nah, we'll just go ahead and go. You guys can watch this whenever. But we are making my famous pasta primavera. And uh, we need some pasta. So for this recipe, you need some pasta, some mixed bell pepper colors. I don't like to use the green. And um, I like to use the orange, the yellow, and the red for this. And we're using all three of these. Some mushrooms. Some crushed red pepper. This is my, I put it in everything, huh, baby? One of my favorite ingredients of life. Crushed red pepper. So we got that. Ah, now I'm not putting <laughs> that in there. My, okay, so you must have a large jar of artichokes for this. And it needs to be marinated artichokes. I like this brand, the Kirkland brand. It comes from Costco. Um, you probably have to throw a little bit more um, sea salt or Himalayan pink salt in there. It's not as seasoned as you would like. So we have some Himalayan pink salt that I put in there as well. And you also need some minced garlic. If you want to mince your own, feel free to be my guest. I don't have time to be peeling all them little cloves and crushing them up and mincing them. But I love this. It, it gives you the, good, the same flavor. Um, you'll need a preheated oven to 375. Um, possibly a little more olive oil, but quite frankly, I get all of the oil I need from the artichokes. So you'll need to boil your pasta, strain it, and then um, you're going to be roasting all your veggies um, together in a pan. Uh, so all the veggies, including the artichokes, we're going are going to go in a large. I have a glass casserole that I put them in, and you put them in the 375 just until they get like just tender. I don't like them too done. I like my veggies to have a little bit of a crunch to them, huh, babe? Good crisp. This is my sous chef, the prepper here, with vegan drip going on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. You're gonna be watching me chopping and all of that stuff. So I'm about, I'm about to chop the bell peppers. Up, and they are cute bell pepper. I just, well, actually, I need a better knife than that. Let me see. Good knife. <laughs> <laughs> so, get my good knife out and start chopping away. Um, I came up with this right after becoming vegan because I needed something that had some veggies in it and would sustain, you know, would, whatever to satiate my hunger. Honey, love me. We pop the pasta in. Yes. So we put all the pasta in. Our pasta has been raised to a good boil, but now we're going to start boiling it. <laughs> Did you put some salt in there? Yes. And a little bit of uh, salt, canola oil. Salt, mm -hmm. oil. We just bite-sized pieces because you're going to really just be eating this. And so what I do is I'll just take this out like that. I can cut the top off. I use the top. I don't use the seeds. Now, if it was a jalapeno, then yes, I'm using all those seeds. I like the fire. So, I'm getting them all out. Off camera over here. In the, in the, in the uh, garbage pail. Cut them. So, I'm cutting into strips from here. Just about maybe a quarter to a half inch strips. All the way around. Just really easy. Be yummy, I promise. On the cutting board, just throw those in the pan so you can see where I'm throwing them. I'm just gonna keep cutting, throwing those in. So today we went to the Buy Black Market at the Black Shrine, or Shrine, Shrine of the Black Madonna on MLK, and it was there were more vendors than than shoppers because we got there early, but um, we noticed a few things about the crowd. It was pretty crowded um they have a lot of people who signed up to be vendors there which is outstanding there were a lot of products that we had never seen before um there were even some vegan products that we purchased um so because we were very happy to see that there but one of the issues that i have with that is when people go to those markets 
Uh, usually they're looking for gifts or very specific items. Um, so we intended to be there in the future. It's just um, we were trying to determine what would be our return on investment for showing up at something like that. And for us, we have very specific thoughts on uh, what we could consider the beyond sales of our product return on investment. And, you know, we're not going to get into that here. However, um, it did give us some ideas about how to set up at those markets in order to attract people who might want, you know, our stuff, which includes the shirt that I'm wearing and the shirt that Frank is wearing. Um, we won't necessarily have those right away, but we'll have those in the future. Um, we really are just using that as market research. So for now, we, we kind of want to get an, a gauge on who would be interested in becoming a part of our little community and learning more about veganism and being a black vegan. We're just going along learning ourselves. We don't know it all yet. Learning. So <laughs> we're getting it together. What would you say, baby? What are, what are some of the bigger takeaways? I like all the diversity in um, clothing and knickknacks and oils and fragrances. It was there, but the people weren't really friendly, more so. They were kind of pushy with their sales tactics. It might be like survival of the fittest. They see limited number of customers there. So everyone was like super salesy. It's not really engaging, allowing people to vibe with your product, which we intend to do. So we want to let you gradually come in and pick whatever design you like, see what message uh, conversational starter that you want to uh, focus on. Be it your plant-based and pop-in, be it your vegan drip, or um, every day is Black Friday. We got conversational starters for everybody. And so we just want to help further the black discussion on um, black family, black health, black wellness, and some mental health uh, aspects. And there are some good vendors there. Um, we met another t-shirt brand, uh, Me Clothing. Cute. And so they included the sister girl, um, giving her her own identity and clothing that she can actually identify with, be it uh, the fro or puff pigtails. It um, was a young lady, and yes. she is adorable. She's from New York, but she moved here to Houston. Mm -hmm. Really loved her setup. Um, so it's Me Clothing LLC if you want to follow her. The, um, the main takeaway, again, you know, the lack of friendliness, yeah, I've, I've always been uh, not a big proponent of desperation uh, when it comes to wanting people to buy your, you can just, you know, that's bad energy. I think when you give that energy out of being desperate, that's what you get back. I don't want that. So I, I'd rather not uh, be desperate for, for sales. Um, I think what a lot of people are missing is that return on investment can come in many forms. And um, that needs to be the focus. You need to have a strategy for that. And um, that can be a topic for another discussion. But I think that there needs to be some thought into, okay, the expectation. You know, what, what is the expectation from, from this event or as a vendor? Um, in addition, our most important aspect right now is you and what you um, tell us about what we're doing. I, we, are, we have to be very, very invested in that and um, interested in learning more about how we're um, going to evolve because we should always be looking forward to be, being better and getting um, our changes of a betterment incorporated into our brand. So that is really the most important thought that I could take away from from the you know attending the event, doing our little market research, and then building community with organizations that are like-minded. We met a vendor today. She has crystals. 
um, gosh, I want to give you her name, but it was a little bit complicated. <laughs> on, the, I mean, when you have to keep saying, give you an underscore and uh, dash and all that, that's a lot. So um, maybe I'll I'll post it later so we all can kind of follow her. But she had crystals. Um, she was very positive. Honey, love, I need um, I need you to open this jar. Then. Okay, so now I got the little leaders. Oh, yeah. Well, I was gonna show the food first. Okay, okay, so I chop up the peppers, right? So, got those chopped up. They're just in a little baking dish. I was like, Do we have a larger one under there? We get a bigger one. Well, I like it to spread out so that they're not there's only one layer of the peppers. Um, but I can use this to mix in, so what I'm gonna be doing, yeah, we got a bigger dish, I'll pour it in there after I get done mixing it. So what I'm gonna do is, Frank is gonna open up this jar of artichokes for me. I'm going to take about three quarters of the jar, along with the juice that's in the artichokes. See, this is the special, this is a special tip. So, <laughs> got, the, got the juice on there. Can I have one of the, the big red spoon with the slots, baby? And, also going to take the crushed red pepper after I pour in all of the juice because what happens when you wet crushed red pepper and those of you who cook a lot you know this especially if you cook spicy things it blooms so the flavor from the crushed red pepper gets spicy it, it infuses everything that you have along with it so right now I'm going to pour the juice you see me do that take the three quarters of the jar of the artichoke Save the rest for like a salad. We just put them in salad or whatever. So, the, you know, we have um, about a quarter of the jar left. So I like artichokes a lot. And then this, they're really good. Um, so now you see the juice is all at the bottom. Mm, they smell so good. It's making my mouth water. Okay. And then I'm going to take the garlic. And a little spoon. I use like a big heaping spoon of, of, of garlic. And I put that in there. The other most important ingredient right after I get that garlic on there, um, salt. Okay. I'm not afraid of salt. However, I know that there are some people due to dietary restrictions. You've been told that salt's not good for you. I think it's the accompanying foods. I don't necessarily believe that it's salt, but that's just me. So I put the salt on there. I got the pink Himalayan salt and I'm just going to crunch it up for a little while following that some black pepper so that's the pink Himalayan salt so anyway um, we really love this and it lasts um, and it just gets better when it's once it's sitting in the refrigerator Frank already took the pasta out um, because it cooks that fast because it's um Angel hair pasta. Mm -hmm. Our oven has just hit the preheat. So we're done preheating. It's almost done. Seasoning. Very important. Pasta. Yeah, you got some pasta in the colander. Al dente. Mm-hmm. Al dente. Is it al dente? No. It's really hard to get angel hair al dente. So we, he takes it and throws it on the... When I mean, you throw it in on the cabinet and it oh, sticks, oh, then it's done. That. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, I'm about to, I hope I don't sneeze, okay. Oh, baby, will you give me the um, garlic, the jalapeno garlic? Yes. That's a secret ingredient that I stole from my brother's house that I like to put in everything. It's so delicious. Uh, he had it at his house. We were in Toledo this summer, and, um, you see how much river, 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 up a lot. So you can see that. So I'm just mixing it up. Finally, I'm gonna put in, so mushrooms tend to like, uh, they're like little sponges, but I like mushrooms a lot. We just have some chopped, some uh, sliced mushroom. I'll throw them in there. See, we need the big pan. So I'm gonna put those kinda at the bottom. What you got there? The garlic stuff is next to me, thank you. This is so good. Garlic jalapeno, and I'm doing my nose like this. Because I know I'm going to have to turn around and sneeze in a minute. <laughs> so, hang on. Hang tight. Hang tight. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's good. 
Okay, now remember, I'm using all these the seasoning on these veggies and this oil. It seems like a lot, but you're going to be mixing it with plain pasta, which is why you need to have it seasoned really well because the pasta will not be seasoned, right? So this recipe used to be for omnivores that um, you, you can put chicken in it and um, if you are not vegan, um, they non-vegans will put chicken and Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is extremely salty. So um, you wouldn't have to use as much seasoning as I did and salt if, if that was the case. But because we are vegan, we are going to only be using the veggies. So I'm pouring them in a new dish. You don't have to change. Ooh, that garbage is right. Mm -hmm. Garlic is good for the heart, so. Yeah. What else about the veggies, baby, that's good for you? So we met a brother that had a business called Little Leaders. Basically created uh, miniature versions, uh, kid versions of Malcolm X, um, Masada, um, Barack Obama. We got a sister that's actually future president, Little POTUS. Um, they have little designs so the kids can see it, STEM. Little leaders, so um, there's a little something there for everybody. We definitely are excited for what we can bring to the table and just taking everything in for our launch. Finished product before it goes in the oven is probably going to take about 15 minutes. So we'll be coming out at that same black market in about two weeks over at the black during Thanksgiving, the Black Friday weekend. So, we're excited to see what we can do, and then we're going to be at the Trail Market Monday event. Um, that's going to be out in Carolyn on December the 16th. So, look for it. And while she's doing that, we'll move on to the dessert portion. So, we're going to make some bre banana bread, and since we're vegan, we can't use eggs, so we have a substitute. You can um, add flax seed and oil and water, and it will give you the same consistency as an egg. And I'll just show you how to do it. No, they got the way too much flax seed. No, we need two big eggs. So you just mix that along for the consistency of egg. And this is just from your Trader Joe's. We got just a regular banana bread box. Bread mix. So pour that in. the contents into the bowl. And from there, so it calls for two large eggs, so that's why we use the flat and created our egg consistency. And then it also calls for a third cup of vegetable oil. So we use canola oil. And then a 34th cup of water. And so you don't use water, what you use? <laughs> no, we're going to use water for that. Yeah. <laughs> we got <laughs> alkaline water that we're going to put into the food. <laughs> Purified by our local um, Walmart, the Primos water. Gina likes her water cold, so. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> so we have our flax. We save some for later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now we'll get some oil. We'll put the oil in. Yeah, I also use applesauce for a 
substitute. What else, babe? I'm new to this vegan thing, so you gotta teach me. So <laughs> the only she thing is seeds, I peanut know, butter, kind of... banana for egg substitute. We have some banana. You can mash it there, right? Yeah, now. fresh bananas that are really ripe. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna rinse my cutting board off and then put this. So you can do that. Most. Lord. Oh. Gonna, what are you? Oh, Lord, help the children. We're going to, in a separate bowl, take our fork, a big fork, and take the banana and mash it up before we put it in the mix. Because it, uh, you can use banana as an egg substitute as well. Or you can put it all in one oh. and use a mixer and just ground it down. It does the same thing. <laughs> Gee, you right. <laughs> it's going down the same way. It will bake just the same. Oh, it will? Yes. Okay, baby. Watch. I <laughs> <laughs> so this is the beauty of the live. You get to see our personalities clash and be able to come together. Show you all great cuisine. That's actually healthy for you. Because I'm a sweet eater myself, so I love a good dessert. And having the ability to bake desserts that are still good makes me very happy. Right consistency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Erica. I didn't yeah, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet. Yes, please do. Just give me the water. Ooh. No, you didn't. How'd you 
feeling about the photo shoot yesterday. So we had our first photo shoot yesterday with some of our products. Um, we had the vegan grip. We had the plant based and popping. We had our ripping that anniversary love. And we just had a few of our items that you'll see on our website. We don't have to name them all. But we have a few things that you will see. If you go to flyexpectations.com, you can find them. So we didn't have anything from our affirmations line, which is next. We're going to do an entire devote, an entire shoot, because those are most of our products right now. Mm -hmm. The affirmations line. Be thinking about gifts. Trade. You just fold it in. So I've already coated this with the non stick olive oil. The non stick olive oil, baby, what's that? So it's a spray on olive oil that you can put to make things not stick to the pan when you're baking or. In the oven or in the uh, uh, conventional oven, so the toaster oven. So we'll throw this in the oven as well. What I love about vegan food is that you can cook it quick, so it doesn't take a long time to cook as compared to marinating meats and having to wait till meat gets to a certain temperature. The vegan lifestyle is easy, it's more on the go. And we'll check back with you later and we'll show you the final product. We'll, we'll send just a, take some pictures. Yeah, we'll put a picture up of what it looked like when it's done. Alright, thank you all for checking in today. Peace.